Bitcoin investors probably want to forget the past 12 months. On the heels of the collapse of FTX, the world's biggest digital currency started this year at around $16,500. Since then, Bitcoin bounced back around 60%, but in recent months has been stuck in a tight range between roughly $25,000 and $30,000. In 2023, investors have weathered a slew of industry bankruptcies, low trading volume, and a regulatory crackdown in the U.S., which have kept the cryptocurrency below $32,000. Not to mention the closure of crypto-friendly bank Silvergate and Signature back in March. People were scared about, am I going to be able to make payroll if I'm a small business owner? Am I going to be able to access my funds? What does this mean uh, in terms of, you know, I thought my assets were safe. Now it feels like it's more someone else's liability and whether or not they can pay it back to me. That kind of a change in sentiment has a real effect on Bitcoin. And there's tremendous headwinds uh, for not just the crypto market, but for markets in general um, in the world, everything from macroeconomic stuff and inflation to socioeconomic stuff and political unrest and all of this. 2023 has been an interesting year. And then on the crypto marketplace, there's additional headwinds in the form of the banking, the banking challenges from earlier in this year coming out, the FTX uh, situation, and then the regulatory uncertainty. All of these things are a bit of a drag on the marketplace. Now, investors have been searching for a catalyst that could spark Bitcoin's next prolonged rally. And that good news doesn't seem too far away, with ETFs, regulatory clarity, and something called the halving on the horizon. Back in June, a whole host of asset managers spearheaded by the world's largest, BlackRock, filed to launch spot Bitcoin ETFs. Those are funds that track the price of the crypto asset. The moves immediately spurred a wave of buying as investors hoped Wall Street was poised to go big on Bitcoin. BlackRock is just so much bigger and so much more important than these other companies that have filed. That if BlackRock does have an ETF, you just know they're going to win. They, they have the resources, they have the marketing, the distribution to put new people into Bitcoin. Then another boost for crypto when Ripple got a partial win over the SEC. A judge ruled in July that the crypto firm's native XRP token is not a security in some cases. And in August, a federal court sided with digital asset manager Grayscale over the SEC in its attempt to convert its Bitcoin trust into an ETF. We look at the price of Bitcoin following the Grayscale ruling. It immediately popped up 6% right after the ruling was announced. And this is a logical reaction to the news, but it was driven primarily by that fear of missing out. It was driven by retail consumers saying, hey, this is good news, I'm going to react to this good news. However, it then retraced and is now trading more in the zone where we would expect it to be based on historical trends and based on where we are in the current market cycle. Now the question is, if those ETFs get approved, will it spark significant long-term gains for the cryptocurrency? It almost certainly will. If you look at Wall Street backing right now, every single major firm is trying to do something in the Bitcoin space. And that wasn't true even a few years ago. The narrative has completely changed. And when those spot ETFs are approved, not only will that be massively significant from a narrative perspective, but also Bitcoin is inherently limited in its supply. And so when there's additional demand and possibly massively in additional demand, and the same supply, it's only natural that the price would spike. So we are we are expecting this to be a major catalyst for price action in 2024. So with all the optimism building as we head into next year, are we about to see Bitcoin's price explode? Right now, it's still hard for people to move into Bitcoin. The cryptocurrency's recent prices are more than half of its all-time high of nearly $69,000 reached in November 2021, something IDX Digital Assets CIO Ben McMillan attributes in large part to the fastest rate increase in the history of the Fed. Rising rates start to reprice risk assets, and all of a sudden, you know, we're talking to a lot of institutional investors who are saying, listen, if I can get you know, five, four, five, six percent in treasury bills, you know, why would I take any, any risk elsewhere? And so that's kind of the big story across macro assets. Now, layer on top of that, crypto had its own crypto winter in the form of regulatory crackdowns. And we had a lot of bad actors flushed out, which ultimately is a good thing. The FTX scandal, of course, was a huge scandal unto itself. 
And so as investors work through that, you couple that with the regulatory overhang, and there's still, there was a lot of uncertainty kind of coming into 2023. I think the good news is that we're starting to get through some of that regulatory uncertainty. We're seeing things like spot filings from, from BlackRock, which are very encouraging for investors longer term. And so they're starting to be a, a light at the end of the tunnel. That could spur investors, especially institutional investors, to buy back into Bitcoin. And Gavin Michael, the CEO of the publicly traded crypto platform Bact, says that could be one of the drivers of Bitcoin's next bull run. Approval of the ETFs is about increasing participation. It's about more people having exposure to the Bitcoin asset in their portfolios through the ETF product. I think we've got the fourth Bitcoin halving coming up in the first half of next year. Traditionally, that signaled a strong and positive run in the price. In fact, the first ever halving in November 2012 saw the price of Bitcoin balloon by 384%, according to CC data. The market moving event typically happens every four years, and it's when the reward paid out for mining Bitcoin is cut in half. The one nice thing about uh, Bitcoin is that you know, the supply is 100% transparent. That can be modeled out for decades because we know exactly what it is. It's immutable code. And so that's why there's such this interest around halving. And we've seen the rallies coming into the halving and we're coming up on, you know, the next halving year, not that far off. And so we would expect that absolutely to, you know, contribute to price in a positive fashion. One other catalyst, regulatory advancements for crypto around the world. Hong Kong has comprehensive legislation in place. So does the EU through MICA. We have good comment papers in the, in the UK. We're seeing that the, the regulators really start to work hard to bring market structure to the digital asset space. And I think Bitcoin will benefit from that as well. So with all that positive momentum, is a Bitcoin bull run imminent? I think a bull run is certainly in the cards. Um, the question, of course, is when. Longer term, when you look out three, five, ten years, the bull case for Bitcoin is, is frankly as strong as it's ever been. But that doesn't mean that it exists in isolation. The macro economy, investors have to choose how to allocate their risks. And so Bitcoin is and always but likely will be a very risky asset. And so when you have things like interest rates rising as quickly as they did or staying longer for higher, that's absolutely going to impact risk assets of which Bitcoin sits at the top. And so I do think in the near term, you know, we urge caution, which, you know, we always do when it comes to Bitcoin. But in particular, I think there could be some weakness, absolutely, in kind of, you know, the back half of this year, potentially even Q1 of next year. But after that, things start to look, you know, really encouraging for Bitcoin longer term. Noel Atchison, author of the Crypto is Macro Now newsletter, says the return of volumes, liquidity and volatility is key to kickstart Bitcoin's next bull run. But that's not all. Any announcement of a large investor stepping in, any announcement of a foreign central bank perhaps deciding to accumulate Bitcoin as reserves, which I fully expect to happen fairly soon. And on the macro front, any signs of monetary liquidity coming back into the market, which, let's face it, would probably be for not very good reasons. In other words, uh, a meltdown and sign of recession, but that would also be enough to get investors back into risk assets. And Bitcoin is arguably one of the most liquidity sensitive risk assets out there. So any of those factors, in my opinion, would be enough to trigger the next catalyst, the next bull run upwards. But the market just doesn't feel ready for that yet. But some think a Bitcoin bull run is already underway. I think we're in the early stages of that bull cycle now. If you look at Bitcoin's price recovery, even just this year, it's significant. And last year was all doom and gloom. This year, we're seeing the slow momentum up, and now we're seeing that sideways movement. And that sideways movement is like a springboard. The longer it moves sideways, the tighter and tighter that coil gets. And that means that when it's time to explode, it'll explode even harder than it would if that action were just consistently moving up.